Have you ever cut a project in Final Cut Pro using a camera something like this, a Sony FX3, and then you want to try out DaVinci Resolve for the amazing color tools using the XML workflow, but when you load it into DaVinci Resolve, everything shows off offline or it just can't find the media? Well, today I'm going to share with you the right workflow to get stuff into Final Cut Pro so it can be finished in DaVinci Resolve without issue. The solution to get your Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve time codes to match so the XML handover works is actually really simple, but it might require you import differently into Final Cut Pro than you've done in the past. Essentially, you got to keep the card structure as it was shot on your Sony camera for that MP4 and especially keep the XML file. So if you've lost the card structure, it basically goes whatever you want to call it to private, to M4 root, to clip, and then you've got your files with the XML. Now, if you lost the XML, I think you might be out of luck on this, but I want to show you the difference on how Final Cut Pro reacts to this. Now, you do need to use this media import dialog for this to work right instead of just dragging directly into the event. So make sure you hit that, say import media, and you'll see the one that has no card structure, Final Cut Pro sees the metadata to all begin at hour zero timecode. But DaVinci Resolve actually sees what's actually in the MP4 files, which this starts at hour 22, 23, and so on. So, and by the way, if you don't have your Sony camera set up to run free run time code, so it's kind of continuous, I, I would do that. So it's unique all the time. That's just going to make uh, a lot of relinking headaches uh, be avoided. Now, the one thing that's going to get a lot of people is if I select one of these clips here, I have the option to leave the file in place if I want to. But if I select this one here that's formatted to the Sony card structure, I don't have the option to leave that in place anymore. Basically what happens when we select these clips here that are gonna have the right time code. Now these are the ones that are following the Sony card structure. Again, it's private M4 root clip and then folders with the XML. I say import selected. You don't need to change anything else. You can see they're imported into here with the time code. The reason this works is because Final Cut Pro behind the scenes has actually rewrapped the MP4 file to include time code into a QuickTime file instead of an MP4 file. So if I right click on one of these now and say reveal in Finder and I double click it to open it in QuickTime, you can see there's actually time code that's baked into that file. If we looked at the MP4 before, it started at zero. But basically DaVinci Resolve wants the time code and so now it's gonna get it. <laughs> Let's do a quick edit and I'll show you how this works seamlessly. Now I'm not a big Final Cut Pro editor anymore, but I will get stuff down to the timeline and just show you a couple caveats to be aware of. So here's three different clips. And actually, if you want to move these up and create what they call a storyline, I wanna show you how this works over there as well because it, it links a little bit differently. So to get these over into DaVinci Resolve 20, select the timeline you want to send over, and then just go up to File, and we'll come down here to Export XML. And once you choose XML, just choose the latest version. I'm on 1.13. Uh, I ran a practice of this already. I'm going to call this one version 2. We'll hit Save, go to DaVinci Resolve, and then over here you're just going to right-click, say Timelines, Import, Timeline, and then we'll just point it to that XML file, tiny, tiny file say import, and we'll just leave everything alone here. So it's basically going to find those files that are bundled up inside that project library file for us. It doesn't seem to have an issue with it. Click OK, and there's our timeline and everything links up. Basically, we still have everything works and, and lines up perfectly. The one thing is this connected storyline is all like linked together as a single clip here. If you want to detach this so that you can edit this separately and do changes further on as you're finishing a DaVinci Resolve, just select them, right click at the bottom. You can uncheck link clips. And then obviously the audio track is going to be disassociated. So if you wanted to relink those, you could come through here and do that. So it's a little bit of housekeeping afterwards, but it's not bad at all. Then you can go to the color page and do everything you want. Now, if for whatever reason you feel like I don't want all my media in that Final Cut Pro library, stick around for one more minute. I'll show you how you can consolidate it outside of there. Final Cut Pro Consolidated Media. So if I right click on this clip right now and I say Reveal in Finder, you'll notice it's buried inside of this project folder. Final Cut Pro is managing this for us, which is fine and great, but if you need this outside of this bundled folder here, in fact, if, you, if you're new to this, you can always right click on here and say Show Package Contents, and that basically shows you everything that's inside of there. I think uh, it's built so that it's easy and you don't have to think about storage at all. But if you want it outside of there, all you need to do is 
basically on your project library up here, we're gonna modify our settings here so that our media is not in our library anymore. And we'll just choose a new location. So maybe I will choose, like you do on tutorials, a location on your desktop in a folder I just called consolidated footage. Click OK, and nothing happens right away until we actually run the consolidate. So to consolidate, all we need to do with that still selected, so the library selected, hit consolidate, and we want to consolidate what original footage, where do we want it to go? The folder I just pulled, told it to, consolidated footage. Click OK. And basically what's just happening right now is the footage is actually getting moved over into that location on my desktop. You can see we've got Final Cut Pro Media folder right there and it's all external to the library. The clip attributes hack. Now this is in case you already edited in Final Cut Pro with the hour zero and still need to get stuff working over in DaVinci Resolve, this might help out. So what we're gonna do is first, let's actually delete what's in here and we'll start from scratch as if we had imported them incorrectly. I will right click and say move to trash. And this time I'm gonna bring in the footage from my desktop from the no card structure way of doing it. This file here, in, out, insert, in, out, insert, in, out, insert. And let's get rid of the gap at the beginning of it. So all these files right here begin at hour zero. They should not work in DaVinci Resolve, but there's a little clip attributes hack you can do. It's just tedious and so I don't recommend it. But if you click the sequence to send over there, then go to file, Export XML, we'll change this to version three. So this time, instead of importing the XML first, what we're gonna do is drag our footage in here with the no card structure. And on each of these clips right here, if you right click on them and say clip attributes, and then you got the time code field, just change it so that the current frame that it's on right here is gonna be zero. And then this one, we'll come over here, say clip attributes, current frame, zero. Clip attributes, right click, clip attributes, current frame, it's also zero. And now what we can do is import the XML and have it look at this media pool over here. So if you right click this time, timelines, import, timeline file, we'll choose our three timeline over here, import. And this time I am going to not say automatically import source clips in the media pool, click OK and it found all the clips just fine. My name is Chadwick. This channel is called Creative Video Tips where I teach all things about DaVinci Resolve and because there's always so much more to learn, I'll see you in the next video.